Doylestown, Pennsylvania, well remembered as the scene of the seventh aerobatic world championships, the first ever on U.S. soil. The competition held in the late summer of 1971 not only challenged the world's top competitors, but also captured the fancies of spectators who were treated to a host of exciting and historic events. Innovations in aerodynamics were tested. Aspiring young pilots were being groomed for future competition, learning the ups and downs of the sport. There were thrills to the sights and sounds of pylon racing. And the fascination of model rocketry. But little did anyone expect that in the gloom of one Sunday afternoon, a foreign-born engineer 4,000 miles from his homeland would make aeronautic history on U.S. soil. He and his colleague amazed the throng of onlookers with flight of not one, but two Huey Cobras, simultaneously performing maneuvers never before thought possible, but now made to look easy. And so with this newfound excitement, aero modeling entered a brand new era, the age of the chopper. The helicopter flown at Doylestown made its entry on the market as a simply designed, easily assembled kit, including detailed plans and instructions, well-formed fiberglass fuselage, pre-assembled machined parts, as well as main and tail rotor blades and other wooden essentials. For the individualist with a few free evenings, and a few extra bucks, the art of chopper modeling was approached with great vigor. that much vigor, so let's take a closer look at some of the fine points. The fuselage is already assembled except for the installation of formers and longerons. The tank is installed across the fuselage to permit monitoring of the fuel level while flying. The stabilizer is simply slipped through two slots in the fuselage and epoxied in place.
The guide for the tail rotor drive is a thin brass tube which runs the length of the fuselage. The drive shaft is greased and slipped into the tube. Perhaps of greatest interest is the mystery which surrounds the method of gear reduction and power transmission. This is accomplished with an assembly made up of three preformed cog wheels and shafts, all in high precision ball bearings. The unit is specially formed for maximum efficiency and minimum power loss. It's self-enclosed and runs service-free in its own oil reservoir. The housing is transparent, permitting a convenient check of the oil level. For power, any modern 60 size engine will do. An efficient throttle is most important. As there is no propeller, a radial cooling fan with its own housing is necessary for efficient cooling of the completely enclosed engine. The motor and main gear are connected by this centrifugal clutch. This type of clutch makes starting easy as the transmission is not engaged while starting procedures take place. The clutch is self-enclosed and requires no servicing. At 3500 RPM, it softly engages the motor and transmission and as RPM is increased, continues functioning without slipping. The main rotor consists of a hub which connects the main rotor shaft with the rotor head, the upper carden unit with the control system, and the block mounting. All moving parts in the rotor head are assisted by ball bearings. The tail rotor gear serves as the drive for the tail rotor which corrects for the torque of the main rotor and allows movement of the model around the vertical axis. Changing the pitch of the tail rotor blades is done by a push rod, which is guided through a control guide and is slip free. Any four channel control system, such as the Space Commander used here, will do. Four servos are needed to control motor, rear rotor, as well as forward and backward, left and right movements by transferring control through the swash plate to the turning counterparts of the main rotor. As the stabilizer bar and its weights follow the swash plate dipping, so do we accomplish cyclic blade adjusting and control the movement of the helicopter. Simple enough to assemble, easy enough for the backyard pilot to fly. To be able to go from the workbench to the back lawn, certainly the dream of every RCer. fascination for helicopters has led to the need for competition and contests began popping up around the country attracting choppers of all sizes and types kit constructed as well as home built although many kits are now available home built were the real pioneers some have highly intricate preformed machine parts Others are the fruits of many hours of hand tooling on a basement workbench. There were times when just getting off the ground by inches was a great accomplishment. 
But now, choppers can be maneuvered with great ease and dexterity, performing many beautiful and intricate flight patterns. No matter what the design or degree of complexity, they all manage to fly, even if only for a while. Unlike RC planes, it's interesting to note that crashes are not always a total disaster, but more than likely, simply the loss of a rotor blade. Competition with choppers is unique in that patterns, both high and low level, are performed against the clock, such as the figure eight being performed here. Time starts on liftoff and ends on touchdown in the helipad, with both ends of the eight passing around a pylon. With chopper flight now very much in evidence, many RC airplane enthusiasts began questioning the transition from planes to helicopters. Yeah, here's the helicopter guy. The patriotic chopper. Well, well. How you doing? All right. How's pattern flying going? Uh, all right. Not it's too good. just about over now. Mm -hmm. Do it fly? <laughs> Sometimes. Yes. From the big one, you buy as a kit, right? Right. Or just like a fiberglass shell and you take it from yeah, there? It's a real thin fiberglass and you glue wooden formers inside of it. Is there much work machining gears on this? Uh, no, the kit's very complete. Um, all the gears are made and bearings are all fixed up. There's no machine work at all you have to do other than woodworking. All right, well, all right. I thought some pattern, right? You know, and stuff yeah. like that. Say I want them to start flying these coppers, you know. What do I start off with, you know? Well, it, it all depends. Now the Whirling Bird here is a, a fine trainer, but a lot of people have had trouble learning to fly them. I had a fairly easy time getting it in the air because I learned to fly my Huey Cobra first. That's easier? Which, yes, this is about the easiest flying helicopter you can get. Really? Yeah. That looks so big. <laughs> Don't you miss like the versatility of them where you can just whip around the sky and do whatever you want? Well, basically with the helicopter you can whip around the sky and do just about anything you want to. I guess that's true. Well, don't you fly planes anymore? You just strictly helicopters? It'll be a long time before I build another airplane. Well, what is it you like uh, you know, about helicopters that pattern planes don't have? Well, when I was flying pattern planes, you'd get tired of going up and doing the same maneuvers from the same pattern over and over again. And with mm -hmm. helicopters, 
there's a challenge to learning to fly them, first of all. Well, that's the same with a pattern, any, any plane, you know. Yeah, uh, but the challenge is in perfecting. You can, anyone can do a maneuver, but to perfect it, you can work on maneuvers for years and not perfect it. And finally, you work yourself to a pitch and then you can fly great. Right. Well, I think helicopters are pretty nice. Why don't you guys get into helicopters? Well, it's not a, you know, a matter of, you know, whether we just want to dive into it. It's expensive, and at our age, you know, we just, not that affluent where we can just go out. Like, I think you said that you, you know, you sold a lot of your stuff just to get into helicopters. I put a lot of time into pattern and a lot of time into practicing and into perfecting it, and I still have to perfect it further, and I want to reach that goal before I really want to get into something else. I don't well, see, I don't see how I can get, I mean, like I'm in, you know, Formula One, FAI, C pattern, and all the fun flies. I don't see how I'd have time for, you know, I'd like to try it, but, you know, it's, how hard is it really? Like, if I'm flying, how long would it take me? Because I don't want, you know. Well, if you, have, if you have previous radio experience, yeah. and you start out with the right helicopter, and if you have the right help, it's extremely simple to learn to fly. It only took about a half an hour of practice till I was hovering a tank full of fuel. I don't even see how it would work. You'd have to, you know, sometimes show me the transmitter and everything, because I can't picture what does what, you know? I think one of the things that's kept me from trying it is <coughs> the difference, you know, in the controls. I'm a mode one flyer which is aileron on the right stick and elevator on the left stick. Right. Uh, I don't understand what makes, you know, Why don't you get one of the transmitters up here? here. Yeah. Here you go. What is that, 10 feet long? Uh, it's about 6 feet long. Now, well, for a single stick, this would be your throttle, which will control yeah. your rotor speed. The higher the throttle, the faster the rotor speed, and the higher the helicopter will lift. Now, what is your elevator control, when you give forward elevator, or what would be down elevator yeah. on an airplane, right. the helicopter will fly forward. It tilts it down? It, it tilts, tilts the, the main rotor. rotors forward, and it'll fly mm -hmm. forward. When you pull back on the stick, Goes it down. tilts the main rotors back, and it'll fly back. Mm -hmm. When you tilt the stick to the right, it tilts the main rotors to the right, and it'll fly to the right, and the same with the left. And when you and your rudder control changes the pitch on the tail rotor blades and swings the helicopter around its from one way to the other on its main axis, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot like a pattern. Yeah. yeah, it is. In fact, once Kick you get it. a helicopter into forward flight, it flies just like an airplane. You yeah. push the stick forward, nose down, nose goes dive, goes pull it back, it'll climb. Like, don't you got to be on the throttle all the time though? Like, if you push it forward. Isn't it liable to go down, you know, and you increase? No. In fact, when you push it forward to go into forward flight, you get what is called transitional lift. Oh, yeah. And it'll, you'll go forward, but you'll climb out like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, can you use, you can use the same radio you got for everything else, right? Oh, yeah. So I could just go out and buy the kit and throw a radio on it and try it, huh? Oh, yeah. So what happens when your engine quits? Well, you, you, don't, don't, let, you don't let the engine quit. Right. What kind of engine do you have in this? I have an OS Max 60. Yeah. Have you ever had the engine quit or anything? Yeah, one day I was flying around, and it was about 20 feet up, and the engine quit. But I was lucky, and I had a training landing gear on it, which has big springs mounted on the yeah. top, and it just bounced a couple times. From 20 feet up? Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that about... Can you really go up high with those things? Like, I've only seen a helicopters fly a couple times, and they'll hover about five or six feet off the ground, that's about, you know, all they do. Well, I think the altitude record is somewhere around 600 feet. Wow. <laughs> which is not too high compared to the airplane altitude record, but then if you consider how small this is compared well, to an you airplane. Can't, you can't, you gotta be more, it, I would think they'd be harder to fly, like if you, seems to me if you tilt them up like that, they just fall off, you know? Well, if you tilt it up like this, it'll just follow around like it'll bank over. Like if you're in forward flight, you can bank them almost 90 degrees and just whip them around like this. Yes, they can whip them around. They can fly them high. They can maneuver choppers with ease and style. There's many a challenging moment for the novice and expert alike. Here, the magic fingers of Ernie Huber aptly demonstrate chopper flying with difficult close-in technique.
some don't even look like they'll fly. But when they do, it's even that much more exciting as this specially converted copter gets off the ground. Collective pitch was introduced to model choppers with kits like the Jet Ranger. The versatility of the chopper makes it an attractive and challenging outlet for many RCers. Although the challenge of flight alone can be very exciting, they can do many interesting maneuvers far beyond the scope of an RC plane. The only limitations to flight control are the ingenuity of the pilot, his skill at the controls, and the aerodynamics of his craft. When all are mastered, chopper flight is a breathtaking adventure in miniature aviation.